Welcome back. Uh, I've got a new car model. I promised to do everything on camera, so here I am doing everything on camera. Uh, once you get your car inside your assets folder, create a new folder, call it car, drop everything inside of the car, and then open up the car and the car model itself and use this external models. So then later on you can change the color and whatever. So now what you can do, drag the car, drop it inside your scene, and here it is. So once again, the car has to be facing the blue axis, which is not right now. So let's fix that. Uh, first of all, unpack the prefab, create a new um, empty game object, call it car2, whatever, you can call it whatever. Uh, here we have a car2, then we're going to transfer everything we need from here to car2. So I'll de delete everything that I don't need, like this, I'll take away the old one. And there we go, now we're left with just the car. Okay, maybe we need to lift it up a little bit. Here we go. Uh, what we're going to do now is take the insides of this car and drop it in here. So we have a car too, and we do not need this anymore. We are in scale 1, which is exactly what we need, and we have everything we need. So since this car has just one tire, we don't need a secondary one. We're just going to do the good old process of creating a tire. So wheel is right here. Make sure it's on zero. Put this wheel as a child of this wheel. Make sure this is on zero and make sure this is in scale. Okay, we got our wheel. Make prefab of the wheel. Delete this wheel. Go to your vehicle creator. Maybe dock it. Maybe don't dock it. It's up to you. Take your car, put it inside the slot. Take your wheel, put it inside the wheel uh, prefab, run checks, and everything should be ready. Now we have a rigid body, and it has created a center of mass, which is not where it should be. Okay, we're going to fix that. So, next, we add components, and then after we add components, we create the colliders. There we go. And then create the wheels. There we go. Now, just fix the wheels like this. It's the same old process. Takes a little bit of time to get used to. And there we go, we have our first problem. So again, this car is facing the wrong direction. Even though I flipped it, the actual game object that I made in here is not facing the right way. So I'm gonna have to repeat the process. Or maybe I think I can just do this. I'm not sure. No, it still doesn't work. Okay. I'm going to have to repeat the process, I'm going to close this tab, create the empty, call it car2, take the insides, delete this, and now make sure this is pointing in the blue axis, put this inside here, and this is still pointing in the blue axis. Okay, I think we should be ready to go. Make sure it's on zero, by the way, before you put the car inside. Okay, now go back grab your tools, put the car inside, put the wheel, run checks, create colliders, create wheels. Now the wheels are corresponding. Okay, we fixed that problem. Let's move on with setting up the vehicle. It looks like we need a bigger wheel in the back. It doesn't seem to fit, but that's okay for now. We're going to add a little bit of camber, as usual, maybe a lot of camber. There we go. We have our car. Looks quite good actually. Okay, now we're done with the script. And let's move on with the actual scripting of the car. Okay, so in this video, I was planning to use the enumerator. This video will be actually a little bit shorter than other videos since I'm kind of running out of time. So let's transfer all of these inside the car. So first, car manager, car engine, car wheels animator okay we just have to reference the containers as usual so wheels goes wheel meshes wheel colliders goes here the input should be found automatically if I'm not mistaking let's see okay everything should be fine let's test it out this car will jump of course and if we go into the set it's jumping because we don't have collision Okay, let's create a, name it something like collision, stretch it out, and make sure that the center of mass is where it should be, like this. 
And now it should be working fine. Let's test it out. It's not moving for some reason. Okay, it doesn't have power. It looks like it's moving. And the wheels are turning. Let's make a camera. Let's put it inside the car. Like this. So we know we're actually driving. And now let's try and build the enumerator. So the enumerator will be going into the car engine. And we should hide these. Because we do not need them. Hide in inspector. Just like this. Okay, let's open up the car engine. And let's build the enumerator. So there is two ways of building the enumerator. First you can just say public enum. Just like this. And if you do this, the enumerator will be a local enumerator. So if you do this and try to use it inside this script, that's going to work just fine. But if you want to use this inside of this script, for example, it's not going to be working fine. So I'll show you how you can do that in here. Or actually, we've, uh, we've built that in here. I'll delete it and I'll just remake it. So system.serializable. If you do this, uh, I don't know exactly what it does, but it just makes it so you can use it in this script as well. So do that. Make sure you save it. Then public enum drive type. Yes. So front wheel drive, rear wheel drive, and all wheel drive. I'll just name it all now okay so the way i'm going to use this is a little bit different from other ways that i usually do and that's mainly because i want to maximize the usability of these scripts so later on we can just drop in a 18 wheeler if we want to and it should work just fine okay so the idea is that if you use the front wheels uh, just the two front wheels will be drivable if you use the rear wheels, then you can use this wheel without these wheels. And if you have more than these, it should use everything but the front wheels. So that's the idea. And since we have the search algorithms, that should not be a problem at all. There we go. We can add in as many as we want in here. And actually, I should hide the wheel meshes because I don't need to access them. So system, actually hide in inspector. There we go. We don't need to see them. Okay, now in move vehicle, we can't just say this. We need to accept a power in here. So let's say float power. Or actually, let's name it input power. Okay, now that we have an input power, what we're going to do is just delete this and make a switch statement. This is not ideal, by the way. This can be further improved. But uh, it's going to work for now. Okay. This will have to be changed to this. But we don't have a declared enumerator so far. So let's declare it somewhere up here. Let's say public drive type drive type. Just like this. And now we have a drive type. Just put the drive type in here. And it should work fine. So case when the drive type is equal to front. Case... Actually, we need to break first. Case when the drive type is rear. And case. Actually, we don't use a case in here. We use. Do we use a case? Now let's actually use a case. Because I was thinking maybe we can just use a default. But let's use a case just in case. A case just in case. Makes sense. Case drive type dot all break okay now the front wheels will use a for loop and the for loop will go not for each just a for regular for loop for loop will just loop the two first elements so um, wheel wheels actually we don't have to do wheels we just have to put in two so as long as the i is less than two which is one so zero and one will be Execute it. I'm going to use the same thing. And this time, we're going to go to the length. So, wheels.length, or actually count. This count is one higher. So, if you have three wheels, 
the count will show you four wheels so all of the wheels should be drivable so zero one and two so two three and if we have more than wheels it should activate I'm not sure and the all is easier for actually we can do it for each loop for each item in the wheels just like this okay so in the front one what we want to do is wheels in the index of i dot motor torque is equal to input power there we go i'm going to repeat that in here and we don't want to repeat that we just want to say item dot motor torque is equal to item i don't know why it's not working there we go okay now the problem is that we can't use this as it is right now because if we have like a hundred horsepower in the whole car what we're saying here is that every wheel has 100 horsepower which is not ideal so what we want to do now is divide this input power by this modifier right here so in this case it's just two in this case it's not two it's wheel slash wheels dot count minus two and in this case is wheels dot count there we go now we have perfectly perfectly block of code okay now let's try and move the vehicle with another script or actually no with another block of code i'll create a run engine block of code right here call it in the fixed update run engine just like this and now we're, we'll say move vehicle and since we don't have a gearbox or whatever i'm just going to use a first let's default this to 40 we're going to work on that later we don't need the angle so we can just delete this uh center of gravity yes the power should be like a thousand okay so let's copy the power paste it in here times input dot horizontal there we go uh, let's make sure that this is working so let's go back i'll try to make the camera sort of pivot around the car so the way i'm going to do that is just create a empty in the middle of the car and just make the camera a child of that so now if we do this into pivot the car sh the camera should move like this okay we got that working so let's create oh we don't need the rigid body as well so i guess i can make it public actually looks perfect let's give it some power let's give it some steering and let's hit play it's accelerating why is it doing that i'm getting the horizontal instead of the vertical so get vertical it's my bad okay simpson here let's press play let's see if it worked the steering works and it's working let's see if we can make it to wheel spin let's give it a lot of power like 5000 torques and yeah it is spinning the wheels and it's not stable now sometimes if you don't put the center of mass into the right position it just gives you this wobble i don't know why let's try rear now let's see this one is spinning let's check out the other one. Oh yeah this one is spinning as well Okay, now let's see if all wheel drive will spin. Okay, all of the wheels are spinning. Let's continue building the game. We're good until now. We're going to polish it up next videos.